What's up guys, my name's Hugh Miller, and within the last few days, Her Interactive has continued to release more information for Nancy Drew number 34. I was at work all day on April 14th trying to avoid going on social media, it didn't really work out. Uh, but as the day went on, my mind continued to be plagued with the latest updates and I've been doing a lot of thinking. This video is going to look at everything that Her Interactive has released on April 14th, 2023, from the environment teaser video to the visual updates to their social media pages. Let's dive in. When the clock struck midnight on the Pacific coast of North America on April 13th, 2023, Her Interactive released an update for the secret web page that was discovered prematurely by the fans. They updated the password for the page and gave fans a hint, uh, which allowed the new password to be discovered in about half an hour. It would have been sooner if there weren't so many people on the website at once causing crash after crash. On the updated website, fans found a brand new video which highlighted the environment that was featured on the header of this secret page. I'm going to show the video, then break it down in a frame-by-frame -frame analysis. Alright, now we're going to go through this frame by frame, which uh, it allows us to get a better look at each individual frame that they've got going on. So here, they bring in this, this magnifying glass, and I'm pretty sure this is the same one that they used on their, um, on the little subscribe to our newsletter image that's on the, the web page for this game. I think that's what this magnifying glass is, and if so, it's possible that we might be getting a new magnifying glass in the next game, but it's, it's a little bit hard to say at this moment. Uh, so they use the magnifying glass to transition into black and white, which allows them to mention the gray box preview. You'll also notice right here that Nancy's flashlight starts to flash, and it flashes twice. So there's the first flash there, and then there's the second flash. And then we transition into the actual gray box footage. So a gray box scene is basically just a very... It's an untextured layout of the scene. But in, in some cases, it's also unmodeled. You'll notice that these trees down here are just squares, right? They look like they're right out of Minecraft or something. So not everything is finished, obviously, and it gives the, the devs an idea of how things are supposed to look and how they're gonna lay out and everything. So it's a pretty sizable environment. We got a lot of stuff going on out here and then a pretty large interior. Where this interior, like what we'll have to do in the interior, I still don't know. It's really hard to say. Uh, it's also really interesting to note that these um, these doorways that go off, which I would assume would it may it was supposed to make you feel like oh there's more to explore, but based on the upper part here, there's nothing nothing else to explore. So you're just going to be focusing on the inside and potentially the outside as well. As we uh, move on here, we get another overhead shot, which gives us another pretty sweet glimpse into into all this. So it looks like, looks like there's a lot of bookshelves all along here. I assume they're bookshelves based on what we've seen so far. And I think the this is the area that we saw in that first render. These are all the portraits. So this is obviously a much earlier version because there's a lot more portraits up here than just the there's six that are up there now. So yeah, this is definitely an early version of the uh, of the scene. How early? I don't know. It's hard to know when this was made exactly. And then we cut to this. So this here is interesting because we get, it's, it's not a super HD image, you can tell by the uh, pixelization or aliasing along the edge of the uh, umbrellas here. This to me signifies that we're seeing a very small portion of this picture and it's obviously been cropped or zoomed in, or they just had anti-aliasing turned off and it's, you know, it just doesn't look quite as finished. But this whole upper area is blurred, as for why that is, I am unsure at this time. Uh, I just realized these these pillars along or the whatever the wall sections here they look exactly like the one from the trivia um, the trivia thing maybe not exactly but that's the first thing I'm seeing when I look at those and somebody may have pointed those out but I just wasn't paying attention uh, we got a lot of plants here so there's uh, these uh, planters here uh, that have I don't know what these little bushes are but there's some nice purple pl uh, flowers here and there's people in here. There's a, there's an NPC back here, and there's an NPC here, and I assume an NPC right there. So there's a few more that are just kind of kicking around, doing their thing, who knows. Uh, but they're zooming in towards the entrance there. 
as we uh, move on, we get another shot with a few more NPCs. Some people were saying that this is actually just Deirdre Shannon, and it does look lo a lot like her from Midnight in Salem. And it could just be a placeholder, because we don't know when these screenshots were taken. Uh, it's really hard to say. But either way, this looks to be uh, just like this first screenshot, except like right over in this area here, based on this doorway here. You can see that again right back here. So I think this is just the same area, but from a different angle. This floor also looks very different to the one that we uh, saw in the trivia as well. It looks very similar because we got the nine, the three by three grid surrounded by a bunch of other little tiles here. This could be the area that we saw in that first screenshot. Again, hard or the, uh, for one of the first uh, trivia things. It's hard to say for sure and we won't know for sure, but either way, I think it doesn't look terrible. Uh, I think it looks all right. It still looks a bit like Midnight in Salem, but I think it's just got a bit more polish to it than, than mid. Now here we're inside. Back here, this looks to be like the outside, but almost at night? It's hard to say, but it looks like it goes on for a pretty large area there. But either way, we've got another view of these, um, these portraits over here. And these two specifically, they look different than the ones in the first render that we saw and it's it might be that they really are just trying to cover up what these are um or they just have some weird filter on them in game that they're i don't know it's hard to say but either way we get another little glimpse at them and uh so this is again that first that first corner uh, and this is the uh the other wall and then we're getting a better view of everything behind the camera and those first screenshots that we saw so as we progress through, then we cut to this scene here, and this is on the far wall. Uh, so this the um, this wall right here is on the opposite end of the room as this one. So there's a lot of bookshelves over here, uh, there's some seating, and it looks like a cafe setup with a bunch of food and eating tables and whatnot. So again, I'm not sure where this food is gonna be coming from at this time. It's, it's hard to say for sure because people are obviously sitting down here, so it wouldn't be coming from here. It, it could be coming from one of these back areas here or just from a completely different part of the building, who knows? Something I saw someone point out is that this is a, uh, a European style uh, plugin. I'm not overly familiar, so I, I'm not 100% sure, but we got a laptop going here. Someone's got a little coffee cup or tea cup, um, and then a bunch more books and bookshelves, more seating over here. It's a very interesting layout of a, of a space, um, but we got a croissant, croissant, and uh, and some more seating, a couple of books open. My guess is that we're not going to be focusing too much on this area. This will more just be part of the scenery. Uh, here's another shot, very similar to the first uh, shot that we saw. And again, we're seeing uh, the, the portraits over here and then just another sort of wide angle view of this whole area. But we're getting a view of the ceiling as well, uh, which looks very similar to the um, to the blurred background image of the, uh, the big puzzle that they put out saying that there's going to be a new thing at midnight on April 13th. So this, um, we've kind of seen this before, nothing new here. Here's another, this is a look at the corner of the room. So yeah, if we cut to this next shot here, um, that previous shot is over on this side of the room. So if you look to the left, then that's where this is, because this bookshelf is the edge of this bookshelf over here. Uh, and again, nothing too crazy going on here, just a lot, of, lot more books. Yeah, I don't know, there's nothing really that's like, that stands out as, ooh, I wonder what that's gonna be about. Uh, still more plants, a lot of plants in here. I'm very interested in this architectural style they got going on here. Uh, it just, it feels very cantina-ish, kind of like Casablanca, but it's, I don't know, it's, it's really weird. It's really weird. It looks good, but yeah, it's, it's interesting. Um, again, a more seating area here, so, oh, maybe that's where you get the food, over there. That's, because it looks like they're selling coffee bags or something over there. Um, zooming in on the chandelier, again, I'm not sure if they're just trying to highlight this as an architectural piece or or what they're doing. Um, it, again, looks good. It looks similar to the one from Haunted Mansion, but it looks good. It'd be great if you have to drop this on somebody. And then here we are, stay tuned for more behind the scenes. I take a little bit of issue with this video uh, in, a few, in a few ways. We got two more flashes here and then it just fades out. Um, it's really hard for me to take a lot of interest and kind of make an emotional connection in this environment for well the main reason is i i just don't i just don't know anything about it it looks good i think it looks good what i don't know is where it's physically located how it may relate to the game at all what this place is called i don't know any of that 
and it's it's just kind of hard for me to to get a connection with this like with the past environments from Midnight in Salem it was when they were uh, revealing those it was a lot easier to to kind of make a, a connection and an opinion ba uh, about them based on what we knew about the game but this in this case we don't know anything about the game they're just showing us an environment and it's really I don't know, I just find it hard to, to kind of make a connection, an emotional connection, and take a huge amount of interest with this with without knowing anything. I would love to know more, and I hope they re uh, release more information soon, but it's it's just so hard to know right now. So, anyways, I don't know. It's uh, I think it looks good. It's not perfect. It's not great. Having the development and test images kind of covers their you know, covers their butts, uh, just so that they can say, well, you know, that was a work in progress if things change. And I'm curious if, uh, how much things have changed. I'm curious when these screenshots were taken. These are not renders, by the way. These are in-game screenshots. So they would have taken this without a UI, just press print screen or whatever. These are not a render. And I can tell that just simply by the lighting. It's not perfect. Uh, and these, these just don't look, these just don't look rendered. To me they look very very in-game like if you just sort of moved your camera around then I don't know to me it's just uh, these are not renders no way uh, definitely screenshots either way that's it let's move on to the rest of the video on April 14th at 12 34 p.m. Pacific time her interactive updated their Twitter Facebook and Pinterest profile pictures and banners with brand new artwork so that all their social platforms were uniform in style. They also slightly updated the gold color on their profile picture to a slightly darker shade than that of the original profile picture used on Instagram and their website. I'm personally still convinced that they're signifying the game's color with their profile picture. If we look at past social media profile pictures for the company right before a release, they've all been styled after the upcoming game. They also get updated a month or two before the game's release. If her interactive is following suit with past releases, this could signify a release window of summer 2023. That is, of course, speculation and should be taken with a pretty big handful of salt. Another thing I want to highlight is that the logo for Nancy Drew that they've used in not only the social banners but also on the new Nancy Drew Mystery webpage has been slightly altered from the one used for Midnight in Salem. Instead of the plain white logo with some colored glows and shadows, this new version contains color and a bevel. To me, this feels like a step towards the older style of logos with a yellow-orange color gradient. I always felt that yellow and orange was a rather signature feature of games 1-31, to with the exception of 32 because it had more blue in the logo. I've got to admit, I actually really love this new style if this is indeed the version of the logo they will be using for the game. It feels more bold and exciting than the rather hollow, and I would almost say sullen, feel of the Midnight in Salem version. That being said, the white text is the thing about the Midnight in Salem version that allows for the most freedom of creativity. This way, they aren't restricted to where the color can be placed like past logos. They're able to adapt the logo's color for each game going forward if they want to. But to me, this isn't the most interesting part. The thing that really caught my eye was the subtext on the logo. A new adventure is coming. Now, I'm not actually interested in the text itself because they've been saying that this whole time. What I'm interested in is the typeface they used. For Midnight in Salem, her interactive used a slightly altered version of Dunelm, if that's how you pronounce it, I don't know, Dunelm, Dunelm, who knows, instead of the typeface Flange BQ for the game title. Flange has been used for the game titles going all the way back to 2000. I'm not gonna lie, I was semi-annoyed that they ditched Flange for mid in 2019. However, if using Flange in this context is a signifier of a change to come, then I will be very pleased. It would make my day to have the game's logo look like this. Now, to come back to the main question and title of this video, is Her Interactive making a return to form? In my personal opinion, I think they've given signs that they might not be making a direct return, but that they've listened to how fans reacted to Midnight in Salem and are making changes to do their best to please as many people as possible. I don't believe that her interactive will be going back to the beautiful renders of old, but that doesn't mean they won't reintroduce the navigation style of the first 32 games. Unity has the capability to have a navigation style that mimics the old point-and-click style. This might be a bit of a stretch, but I also find it interesting that they've been using assets from the older Nancy Drew games in their marketing and next to no assets from Midnight in Salem. I would hope, and like to assume, that the marketing team has been given instruction to reference the company's past work for a reason other than nostalgia to bring fans back in. But, it could also very well be a simple marketing tactic to bring in as many fans as possible. My suggestion would be to keep expectations low just in case. In the words of Josiah Crowley, time will tell. So what do you think of all this? 
Are you feeling optimistic about the next game, or will you believe it when it releases? Let me know your thoughts on all this in the comments below, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a wonderful rest of your day.